Hi everyone, I'm Nathan here from the ebook reader blog. For this review, I've got the Books Go 10.3. This is Onyx's latest Eno, and it's their first uh, 10 inch model with a black and white screen to have 300 PPI. All their other ones had 227 PPI, so it's a noticeable upgrade as far as the screen goes. Uh, it just seems to be closer to the surface as well. It doesn't have as uh, much of a gap with the front layer here. On the back of the device, there's this sort of textured lamination. It does kind of have this gap between the edges there. It kind of has a rough edge I don't particularly love, but it's not uncomfortable or anything. The device is very thin and lightweight for its size. Got the power button on one side, USB-C port, so it lacks a memory card slot like some of the other E-Notes. Uh, the stylus is fairly basic. It doesn't have any buttons or an eraser. Um, and the magnet is uh, fairly weak, but it does hold on to the side. So overall design is pretty nice, but the device, the biggest thing is it lacks a front light. So unlike most other E-Notes, it's like kind of like the Remarkable in that regard, does not have a front light. So the UI, it's based on Android 12, but it's not really like standard Android 12. It has Onyx's, you know, custom skin here. You've got your different sections for the notes. You got your storage section and you got your app drawer, of course. Uh, it also supports ebooks, so you got your library for that. Um, then up here, if you swipe down, you have your quick settings. There are some handy features like split screen and screen mirroring, and uh, there's a bunch of different stuff you can set up on here. Uh, so the UI definitely has some cool things going for it, and I like the gesture-based navigation. Uh, so we'll talk about that really quick. It makes uh, navigating the device really easy. You just swipe up from the bottom to go to the home screen. You can swipe up from the right to go back, swipe up uh, from the left to the ink center, or you can uh, activate the navigation bar if you want, and you can customize these too, so it's not just what it is set here. There are some other gestures that you can set up for uh, swiping in from the side as well. Um, and then you have all these different uh, things you can set to it, like if you wanted to access the apps or the volume, or since it doesn't have a front light, normally you could adjust the front light by swiping up and down, but you just got some other stuff you can set on there. You can do screenshots. So I really like uh, how just the user interface works, and you also got the display settings in here. So if you're finding everything a little bit on the small side, you can scale everything larger, so that'll scale everything up as far as the menus. And you, know, you can see right there, even on the uh, side menu right there, everything got scaled up. It's a little bit easier to read. It's nice having features like that on reading devices. Not everything has that. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the apps a little bit. So these are all pre-installed apps except for the Kindle app because I wanted to compare it with the Scribe, which I'll do later. Uh, but so one thing you got to learn when you're using third-party apps on Android is it can be kind of glitchy just depending on how it's set up. So if you swipe up from the left here with that gesture, you have the optimi optimization settings. And there's also these different refresh modes. So depending on what refresh mode you have set up, it's going to like sort of depend on how smooth it scrolls or how much it refreshes. So you got these different modes here. So it just sort of depends. I see people often saying that it doesn't refresh well, or there's too much ghosting. You got to mess around with these apps a lot. Uh, each individual app has, you can have different refresh modes. So it's going to depend on how, you know, what setting you're using, how much it flashes and how little ghosting you get. So you kind of have to you know, experiment with these to get what you want to, you know, what you're trying to achieve the best balance between that. You also have these different settings as well for like dark color enhancement. So you can uh, increase the text boldness basically. And there's a bunch of different optimized settings. So these are available for each app on an app by app basis. So just some, one of the things you got to kind of learn when you get an Onyx device, just setting things up, trying to get, you know, an app optimized as possible because they aren't designed for ink screen. So right with these uh, um, optimization settings, these different refresh settings you got to kind of you know experiment with these to get the app to work uh, as best as possible on an ink screen so um, it is kind of nice having that but it definitely takes a little bit of setup here and like I said each individual app can have different refresh modes right here find regal works best for the Kindle um, some apps that require you know scrolling speed uh, is going to work better so this little icon in the corner here it lets you uh, set up different stuff on here you can customize exactly how it lays out you can have different quick settings on here you can access different things if you want to jump uh, back and forth between different apps or whatnot so that's fully customizable you can actually turn it on and off if you don't want it. It kind of goes back to older Onyx's devices before the gesture-based navigation. I don't find it as useful now that you can just quickly jump around using gestures, but uh, you can disable that if you don't want to see it, or you can enable it. You can also minimize it. So here's a quick look at the Note app on the Books Go 10. Uh, so they got a ton of settings up here. You got your different pen types. I kind of did a sample here of each different one. You have different a uh, bunch of different colors, so obviously those won't show up on the screen so well, but they will when you export them. And then you have different line widths for each setting. 
Um, and then you can you basically have different presets here. Each time you hit this, it'll create a new preset. Um, and then you can basically have that set up so that you can just quickly you know, jump from one pen type to another. You can delete those presets. Uh, and then you got your eraser setting up here. You can also use the undo for a quick erase since the uh, stylus doesn't have an eraser on it, but you can also like squiggle stuff uh, over writing and that will erase it. You can view thumbnails for each page, jump back and forth between them that way. So you have the different shapes as kind of shown here. You have this shape. Once you select it, then you'll be in shapes, but you select it again. You can choose from the different ones. Again, you have the different colors, the different uh, line width. So uh, you could do that on here. Uh, you can also, there's this uh, AI tool where it will automatically, you know, make perfect circles if you just hold down after you draw like a circle or square or a triangle. So if you just hold down, then it will automatically convert it that way. So it's different AI tools on here. So you got the shape perfection and different lasso recognition. There's the scribble erase that I was talking about earlier. Also, we'll convert handwritten notes to text as you see here. So you got some cool different features with that. Uh, you've also got the ability to insert different things. So you can insert uh, images or recordings, even links to like uh, web pages. Uh, or different files. Um, you can add different pages just by hitting that button. You also got the uh, different zoom, so you can zoom in if you're doing a drawing or something. You can also search your notes, then you have some different export options. Uh, I'll show the different accounts you can export to here shortly. Um, you got the different uh, layers. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, templates um, pre-installed as well, so you've got these ones. You can also add your own custom templates so there's a lot of different templates to work with in the note app so overall it's got a lot of features to work with a lot more than something like the kindle scribe they've been working on this note app for several years now so they've added a lot to it over the years i like how they've added the uh, you know notes next to the icons now you should just be icons it's a little harder to tell what some of those did but now it's a little bit easier to tell so from the note view here from your main notebooks you have some different stuff you can do here you can like lock each of your notes um, you can sync it with your onyx account or you can sync it with these different accounts here you can bind your account to these uh, to set up different uh, syncing for your notes so you can get them off the device easy uh, there are some different views as well this is just like the main cover view um, you also have the um, you know the detail mode and there's also a list mode there are some different sorting options as well you can create folders to organize so uh, there's a lot of stuff going on for the note app so let's jump over to the ebook app it also has some different views so it has the cover view uh the detailed view so same sort of thing as the note app and then the list view so uh the ebook app supports a wide range of formats the only thing is it does not support drm ebooks at all so if you have like purchased ebooks you'd have to remove the drm before you'd be able to uh, load them up into the Neo Reader app. It doesn't support any kind of DRM at all. It's one of the uh, drawbacks with it. So you can install, you know, Android apps, of course, if you wanted to, you know, read DRM to books, but you can also use the Neo Reader app. It has a ton of features. It's got the tabbed browsing up here, so you can have multiple documents open at once and jump between them. Um, there's just a ton of different customization settings as far as layout goes, as far as fonts and, uh, you know, spacing. So you got a whole bunch of different settings for that. And you got different navigation settings. There's also text to speech. So there's no shortage of settings as far as this app goes. Uh, again, it just doesn't support the purchased ebooks unless you remove the DRM from them first. They also added the dark mode recently to their uh, ebook app here. So you can have the inverted uh, white text on a black background. And it really stands out on this screen here with the uh, you know the new 300 ppi screen with the uh, without the front light layer inter interfering with the clarity or anything uh, it's very clear the darks are very black it looks really good do like the screen on this device uh, so if you can get by without the front light i do consider it having the best screen uh, as far as 10 inch e notes go just because it's really clear very close to the surface you can write on the screen as well using the ebook app so now that we're inverted though so it's going to write with black text you're not going to be able to see it so you'd have to switch over to using white and then of course you're not going to be able to see the white once you switch back to regular mode so it's just sort of one thing to consider but um yeah i do kind of like having the dark mode and you can write notes that way as well you can also just switch back to the regular mode you have your different pens just like the uh, note app i was showing before you have all the different settings and all the different pen types so it's very advanced as far as the uh, writing on the screen goes with uh, regular ebooks you can write on you know ebooks and pdfs so 
Um, pretty cool app, actually. It's got tons of features, like I said, and being able to write on everything gives it a, uh, an edge over some other devices don't, that don't let you write on ebooks, like the Kindle Scribe. It has the sticky notes instead of being able to write directly on the book. And then you have these different things you can set for your quick settings bar there. So, another cool thing with the uh, Onyx software here is it has split screen mode. So, you can have an uh, ebook document open on one side and the notebook open on the other side. You can uh, customize the size of this. So, it's pretty cool. You can also have two documents open side by side, uh, the same document open side by side if you wanted. Um, and it also has like a text note as well if you wanted to type with a keyboard. So, the split screen feature is pretty cool. It also works with other apps if you wanted to take notes. Uh, it's not just with the built-in Neo Reader app, but it'll work with other apps as well. Uh, another thing I wanted to show is the Neo browser. So Onyx's devices do work pretty well as far as web browsing goes compared to other ink devices. Again, it's going to depend on like the refresh modes that you use, how smooth like scrolling is and how often it'll refresh. Um, so some of Onyx's other devices have the BSR technology, which is like a faster refresh. They're a bit smoother as far as stuff like this goes, but I mean, uh, this one is, is still usable as far as the web browser goes. It's definitely better than most ink devices, uh, and it just kind of depends on what mode you're uh, using. It does help to have it on the faster mode as far as scrolling goes, but you know, it works pretty well. Uh, screen looks nice and clear. You can also customize the darkness by messing with the uh, dark setting. So uh, people often ask if you can use Onyx's devices to watch videos. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to with an ink screen. But, I mean, it is possible. Um, it's not going to be all that smooth. I mean, you're limited to like, I don't know, 8 frames per second, maybe a little more with the uh, fast refresh mode. So, I mean, you can watch videos, as you can see here but it's not gonna be all that smooth. It's gonna help if you use a faster refresh setting, but then it's gonna kind of build up um, the layers and it's, it's gonna have more ghosting that way. So, I mean, it is doable, but certainly not something you're gonna probably wanna rely on uh, regularly or anything like that. But, uh, I mean, overall, Onyx's software is pretty nice as far as the customization goes, and you got all these cool different features not available on a lot of the more basic ink devices, but, uh, the Note app's got a lot of cool stuff going for it. Another cool thing is you can take screenshots of like the web browser or pretty much anywhere uh, and then write notes on that. So some devices are fairly limited with their note-taking capabilities, but Onyx's devices, I mean, you can pretty much take notes anywhere by using screenshots. You can also uh, use the different pens and all the different typing elements as well. So fairly robust note-taking features. The screen looks really good with the 300 PPI. If you can get by without the front light, it does have a really nice screen, but of course some people are definitely going to be bummed out by not having a front light. Wouldn't be surprised if they released a model with a front light in the future though, because Onyx tends to release a lot of models. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Check out the ebook reader blog for the full review. I'll also be posting a review of PDFs and a comparison with the Kindle Scribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.